Hello, welcome to Have A Go, and I'm Alan. First up, I think I should probably apologise for the, the, for the non secateur at the start of last week's video, because I thought I had uploaded the video before that for the handle, and I hadn't. Hopefully, this, when I show you the stuff at the end of this video that I should have showed at the start of that video, it'll be a bit clearer. But I do know enough about YouTube to know that you don't start off with the big stuff first, you leave it as a teaser. So, new acquisitions. This is 12mm um, 12, 12 rod stock, and this will be on the X, well, this will be on the axle for the bottom of the yoke, or the Scotch yoke for the shaper. So that'll be the bottom axle. This is 20 millimeter um, rod, and it will go through the crank bearing that I'm currently boring out, assuming the bearing fits on it. Mm, I'll file it. The ends have probably got a burr. And that will go through the crank bearing and go on the bull wheel. What is the bull wheel, you may ask? All the way from RS components, this. Oh, I say all the way, it's from the New Zealand warehouse, which is a big re part of why I got it from RS. Because it, then I only have to order from New Zealand. And it's not an international order, I don't have to deal with all the rest of it. Now, Gingari specifies type, type 35 sprockets. Unfortunately for me, RS don't carry Type 35, they carry 06B and upwards. So this is this will be our bull wheel. Yep, that's enough. There needs to be um, four WAS names across for the Scotch yoke component tree. So I'll put that back in the box for the time being. I want to run it. So that will go inside the shaper body itself. This next whittle bit goes on the counter shaft. And you probably can't see it through all the plastic, it's that tiny. 10 tooth sprocket, and the big ones are 40 tooth. So that's a 1 to 4 reduction, which should be. Again, I'll put that back in, in the box for the time being. And this is the chain. I should be able to measure out just enough of what I need and then cut it short. And then with the two ends, I can then use this joiner link. So that will be the part of the main drive for the shaper. These, on the other hand, some super cheap centre drills are bought. I've been informed it's not really worth the money to buy expensive ones because they break just as easily. Because I've had the tip break off on one of my existing sets so I figured I'd better get some spares. So, now that I've annoyed you with a load of waffling, you get to see what I was on about with this. Just going to start by making a new shaft collar for the cross slide. Because the current one, right here, because this one, the grub screws keeping it in place are a bit stripped out, so it's supposed to be back here against this, so there's no backlash. But, as you can see, now it's moving, now it's not, now it's moving, now it's not. So I'm going to make a new shaft collar that won't move all the jolly time. And I'm going to make it out of this round steel stock. And do the bolts from the drive dog. I'm going to use these as V blocks to hold the stock. <sighs> Need a 6mm through hole here and a couple of holes for the set screw under there. Thought just occurred to me before I get too carried away. Will this fit in the clamp for the bandsaw? I better check. Yes, just. 
Very important that because I really don't want to hacksaw through that myself. I don't want the shaft collar to be too wide because then I'll be robbed of travel in the cross slide. Right, tapping steel, so I'll start with the number one tap and the final tap. I think at some point I'm going to have to buy a big bag of, nut of M6 grub screws. Alright, chuck that up in the bandsaw and get it to cut through it, because I don't want to. Alright, while that's doing its thing, let's undo this. Now th this shaft collar hasn't done too badly for itself because it's being held in by the handle as well. Incidentally, I picked up some Lazy Susans from an armchair I pulled apart. So if anyone has any ideas for some kind of workshop equipment use for these Lazy Susans, let me know. I mean, I wouldn't try and spin them at anything more than one revolution a minute, but yeah, the price was right. I just ran, just ran the tap through this again. Now it works. Right. Moment of truth. Right. Now to do it up. You can see the size of the old sets, um, shaft collar next to the new shaft collar, can't you? <laughs> oh, that's a bit too tight. <sighs> There we go, new shaft collar. The surface on this thing I made is a bit rough, so I'm going to put some nylon washers in, in it. And it's a lot better. This small one is one of the crappy shaft collars, but is also being held in place by this, so it doesn't matter as much. Mm, a bit of oil on the cross slide ways. Yep, they're still nice and tight. Yeah, it's moving a lot nicer. Just like a bought one. Should have got those nylon washers a while ago. Oh, well, hindsight 2020. 